today. Harmony triads and uh, just something I call Don't Poke the Bear, uh, pet peeves. Uh, so the Harmony triad is really just a brief thing that I kind of wanted to throw out there so we can touch it real quick. Uh, we're going to probably move through it quick, real quickly, uh, unlike the other triads that we spent a lot of time on. But I just think it's something that's important we can put out there. So we'll kind of roll into that. This is our harmony triad, so we're not going to come to the guest thing like we did before. It's all triangles, and they just kind of turn. So our three, six, and nine, that center triangle is one of these. And then seven, one, and four, eight, five, and two. So if you'll notice, if you're an eight, these are the places you go in stress and in health, and a one, health and stress. So they're kind of like the key focal points on those, and obviously nine, six, and three are all connected, so they rotate each other. So they, I just want to show you where they're at, and then we'll kind of go through these. Again, I'm going to try to be quick because I don't want to spend our whole time on this. Uh, so the thing about a harmony triad is how, how all the way back here, how they connect to the world, how, the, how your grouping connects to the world. Okay? Chief, we our number right here. You. Uh, so two, five, and eight. Two, five, and eight, they connect to human. Connect to human. Now, I know my fives are already thinking, hold on, I don't do people. <laughs> so, but, it, but, but you do, but you do it to a degree. So they provide something. They provide something. These three provide something. I want you to think, I don't know if you've ever heard this whole like illustration of, all right, if we're all in a boat, and we only got enough provisions for some of us, who are we going to cut? The two, five, and eight. The two, five, and eight got reasons to be here. Okay, because they connect to, they connect to human. So the eight, he provides leadership and he provides strength. You can't cut me. The five, I provide your wisdom, the smarts, I got you. And two, I provide a service. I provide the heart. So the, the brawn, you know, you can see the muscle, the mind, the heart. Okay, so that's what they're going to do there. So one provides the heart, one provides the mind, one provides the strength. They provide something. Uh, they're also called the relationists because they're trying to create that relationship to human. So they are they are kind of needed in a way. And, and, and in that, the twos are moving towards people yep. to be helpful. The fives are kind of pulling away so that they can, you know, so they can deliver some reason. Uh, they can they can back up and go kind of in their mind and, and what they're bringing away from people, but they're they're bringing some perspective. You know, are the eights? Okay, well, they're, they're going to speak out and they're going to be assertive, and so they're going to provide protection or, or whatever is needed right then at that time. So it's their relationship to humans. One's going to them, one's kind of going away, and one's kind of, I, the word would be like declared with others. Um, Help them out. So rejection is kind of another name of this triad, the rejection triad, uh, the human triad. So uh, just because rejection, they, they connect themselves with these so they don't get rejected. Uh, Alright, so our 369, they connect to earth. So the world, they connect to the earth. They kind of find their place in the earth. They find their place in the earth. They attach to something. They attach to something. So our three, our three is going to attach to the idea of being uh, successful or just uh, the idea of I found my place and I have prestige among it. And so I connect to that. Uh, part of earth. So it's the I'm getting looked up to where the six is connecting to the security that they find in it and nine's the comfort that they find in it. So they connect to something uh, kind of like that some type of feeling that's here on the earth. Uh, they're just they're, again, they're, they're the attachment triad. It's, it's a hands on, it's down to earth, it's practical. The, yeah, the pragmatist. It's, it's very practical. Dumb. You know, the, the, the three is, is uh, they're, they're providing. A sustaining role. This, this this achiever, they're they're going to uh, bring bring something practical in that sense. Like a six, uh, brings some security and existence uh, to this world. Something very in, hands on in this world, uh, where a nine is going to have a comfortable position of you know uh, kind of like a, a, a place in this world that, that just provides some peace. Something very practical and hands on in this world. So they're they're kind of related to earth, hands on, practical things. Yeah. All right, and so then our last one, our one, four, and seven connect to heaven. Okay, connect to heaven. They're the idealist group. They hope for something. They hope for something. So they all have a better vision, like heaven. We all have a better vision. So the ones, they get frustrated 
because they don't live in a perfect world. They want to <laughs> fix things and make things perfect so they feel frustration. They envision a perfect world, but it's not here, so they get frustrated. And then for our fours, you know, it's the same idea, this charismatic feel, this, this, this unique connection to, to a utopia, to where everybody feels special, to everybody enjoys this. They, they want that. And sevens, a place free of pain and suffering. Pain and suffering. I, I talked to the office staff this morning a little bit of just how I was feeling that hard lately. Just a lot of people complaining and a lot of people stuck in some pain and suffering and how much it bothers me. And so we're, we're known as the frustration triad. Because And so uh, in our ones, they float between four and seven. They're the most frustrated of all. But they're, they're looking for the ideal, the heaven. It's, it's, their perfection is out there somewhere, and they get kind of frustrated that what we have here in this earth and with humans is not. And so, Grass is greener for those three types. Grass is greener somewhere. And so that they're... Can you get a picture back? Yep. Yep. All right, so that kind of wraps up our harmony stuff. So we're we really all just blow through that. Yeah, we, we, I didn't feel like we had enough stuff there to really dwell on it, but I thought it was important to point out. Uh, so this is don't poke, poke the bear, the no trolling zone. Uh, I'm, we're going to teach you about each other's. Let me touch you in a soft spot and hurt you and, and poke you, and for the point of being able to avoid it or realizing I've done this to this person, I should stop. I've done this, and I should say I'm sorry because. There are lots of things, have you ever like, how could this bother somebody else that doesn't bother me? Why are they bothered by that? Why, why did that hurt their feelings? Uh, so this is kind of why we're in our groups because we'll go through our groups and we'll talk some. Uh, Mr. Mike's sitting there alone so he can turn around and talk to, because <laughs> he's connected to that group over there. Mr. Mike thinks he might be a four, so he's sitting in our four group, so he's connected to the one, so he can turn around and do that. Uh, we're sitting in our numbers, homies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, where's our ones? Ones are one and twos are right here. Threes, we don't have any threes, do we? Oh, we're in tables. You're nine right here. Let's see where Tommy lands. Did we get it out yet? All right, so here we go. All right, so for you to just come in, we're about to we're about to talk about things that upset us, and I think this would be another good moment to see how well this resonates with you. When your numbers list is up there, remember everything isn't spot on, guaranteed. Your number that fits me perfectly, but I think this is just another sign of yes, those things bother me. I am that number. Or if you just see another list, you're like those bother me way more than the list that I had. That might be a might, might be a shit. Yeah. So uh, we'll go through and we'll just talk about it. At your table, you'll talk about it and, you, and just share a little bit. So here we we'll go. Ones, get angry when you give them unclear or inconsistent expectations. You micromanage them. You don't carry your weight. You gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do for the team. You can't just be on my group and I carry you. You question their integrity and you keep changing the plan. So what you're thinking, some of you in some other groups are probably thinking, oh, that resonates with me, and that, that's fine, because uh, everything that we list is probably pet peeves to a degree of anybody. I mean, I don't really like you. I, don't, I personally like to be micromanaged. I, no, I don't. But I'm just saying, I don't think anybody feels that, but these just, the, the idea is they truly resonate with them. Uh, micromanage, Leslie hates to be under a microscope. She's a teacher and she has to get come in and have to like kind of like watch you teach a kid and Leslie hates that moment. She never does anything wrong, but she's just like, they're just staring at me and judging my every move and she's trying to be perfect in that moment. So she hates that. Does these ring true? My yes. one table? Yes. Do you, do you feel like like these these are the core lists right here? Yes. Do you feel like there's something that like I, I would have assumed this would have been up there? Okay. Well, they can change the plan as long as it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> but not keep changing the plan. Even if it makes sense, we just can't keep changing it. All right. So that's, those are ones. Joe, lead us on our twos. All right, twos. Well, that's 
That's me, and so it, it's, going to, it's going to hit a little close to home from here, but um, don't acknowledge our contributions. Uh, you know, if, if they've been doing something and, and just they don't get any recognition for it, and did no one even notice that I did this? Um, when, I, when I got up here this, this evening, the chairs were all just a mess. I straightened them up and pushed them up to every table, and the bill was kind enough to notice that. It's like, hey, you, you pat on that back. But, but you know, you just when, when you're doing things, um, you it's not just so that you get noticed, but it gets frustrating when you're always doing it and enough, you know, no one ever even noticed that I did that. Um, or when they do help and nobody joins in. And it's like, oh, you're the only one doing it. You don't get any reciprocal uh, help there. Or when you, and here, just kind of shifts it a little bit, when you force them to share their own needs too quickly. Um, one of the things with the two is they try to not be, um, forcing their needs on people. They try to be the one who helps other people with their needs. And so if, if you ask them about their needs, they're, they're quick to say, oh no, I'm, I'm here to kind of, you know, help everybody else. I'm not gonna share my needs. And you put them on their microscope or you put them under the, the gun there and say, hey, uh, you know, what do you need? Force that, that can cause a little, and, little and that, that goes all the way back to our childhood message stuff. If you remember that, that childhood message is like, your needs don't matter. And so like, they're having to battle through their childhood message that is ingrained in them to tell you what their needs are. So for, don't, you can't force that out of them. they got to battle through that. So this next one on here, they get upset when they actually do put up a boundary. Uh, one, of our, one of our problems is we always say yes. Hey, can you help me with yes? Hey, hey, can you help me? Yes. But if they ever do say no, and then you're like, well, why can't you do that? You know, so wait. Joe, you're the most unhelpful <laughs> two I've ever met. It's <laughs> <laughs> <Mom's mom. laughs> <laughs> like, oh. I hate telling people no, and then don't question me once I do because I did finally say no, and then oh well why not you know make me feel guilty make me want to you know go past that so they help me get angry. I become impatient when they process verbally. I tell you what I do not. Twos this this may this may resonate with you or may not, but I just process it out loud. I don't come to a conclusion and then share what I've learned. I learn it out loud as, as we're talking it through. I, I come to a conclusion that way. And so I work it out out loud. And so if, if you become impatient when I'm just, you know, kind of working through it, that's frustrating because I'm not that five. I'm not that pull back and go, let me think about it and give you the right answer. I'm, well, let's just start talking about it and maybe we'll get there. What sticks to the wall? <laughs> yeah, just there. throw it all out there and see what sticks. All right, twos. Um, does this resonate with you? Yes, no, maybe. One in particular really stand out to any of you? It's like, oh, that, that is my sole pressure um, right there. The first and second one for me, definitely. All right. Yeah, they're, they're very closely related there. About, you know, what this, this, this one right here is kind of like the same idea of like, you owe me a favor too, right? Like, it's like, if I did something for you and then I come knocking and you don't, yeah, yeah you can help me, so let me help you. Like, yeah, that would definitely, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I did want to pause it, not just because we're on two, but. For, for the rest of y'all, who are not a two, who don't, don't necessarily relate with twos, are these kind of things that really irritate you, or you just kind of like, oh, that kind of bugs me a little bit, but not so much? Raise your hand if they're kind of, some of these kind of bug you. Okay? So raise your hand if some of these really bug you. <coughs> okay? Really? <laughs> okay. Joe's right. just like, these are my soul, right? Hey, let's, let's go back to that for one, two. Raise your hand if our one list kind of bugs you. Okay, I, I think there'll be a few more now. Raise your hand if they really bug you. Okay, there's some really buggers up there. Okay, all right, let's roll over to three. Three, there it is. Yeah, we're rolling. All right, so threes, interrupt them when they're working on a project. If they're in the middle of something, they are focused. Remember, they're, they're lazy being the end, they're focused. They don't want to be interrupted because it breaks up their process and then they, they may not finish later. Ramble on and on or dwell on negative things. Just when you're rambling, that really bothers them. They're, 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 they're a focused group. They want to get their stuff done. Move slowly and inefficiently. Remember, they're trying to find the most, in, the most efficient way to do it. The most efficient way, even if that means cutting off a couple of corners, we're going to get there. So if you're moving slowly, it's going to bother them. Rehash the past over and over. Can't keep bringing up past failures or past anything. They just, they, Okay, cool. Let's move on. They don't want. They don't want you. Live, they don't want to live in their, especially their past failures. They don't want to live in because that's not a success. <coughs> and that they, if you're in a relationship with a three, what's going to drive them nuts is the idea of. Well, remember 
Seven years ago, you left the mayonnaise out. Like they're just like you still bring up the mayonnaise. Like they 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 are cannot be. That's gonna bother them. Okay. So force them to try something. This one this one's a big one for them. Uh, force them to try something they know they won't be good at. Force them to try something they know they won't be good at. Like putting them in a situation, they're all for that. I'll try something new, but if, they, if it's just like I'm guaranteed to fail at that, like trying to throw them out ice skating when they didn't even roller skate well, they're not interested in doing that. Uh, rarely verbalize approval or praise. Remember, do that. <laughs> Remember, thank you, Joe, you're so helpful. Uh, they, they rarely vote. <laughs> they rarely verbalize approval or praise. Uh, like if you rarely tell them, they, like the words of affirmation idea, the love languages, that's a huge one for them. That's that's their go-to, their money maker. If you you just gotta you gotta throw them a little bit. And sometimes when I know the person's a three, I don't want to give them any of that. I just feel like you know, part of me is part of me just like giving like nope. I'm not feeding the ego. I'm not feeding, but they they still. As a person and, and somebody I love, I need to do that for them. That, that's their love language, that's what they need. So give them some of it. Don't, don't deny them all of it. All right, I know we don't have any threes in here, but raise your hand if some kind of bother you. Raise your hand if all of them really bother you. If some of them really bother you? So, yeah, 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 for sure, okay. Joe, what? What? They decided to catch all the. Uh, I hit the button. Let's just see if it waits for me. I hit the button again. Let's see what happens. All right. Maybe my battery's down. All right. All right, Mike. Here we go. <laughs> so, if Mike is, but yeah, you know, one of the one of the characteristics of of fours, and we we. Kind of harp on this a little bit too much. We kind of paint a negative picture, just kind of this sad, off in the corner by themselves kind of thing. But it, it does come out in a lot, and don't, we don't want to, you know, just paint this as a, as a negative thing all the time. Because there's there's lots of joy that is brought to the world by force. But um, when they're down, um, you can't just tell them, "Hey, just cheer up. You know, put on a happy face. Uh, it's going to be just fine. You just got to do this." Uh, no, that's not going to work. Remember, melancholy is okay for them. Like they, they, they're, they're, they're okay in that space. Yeah. They're okay, and, and it's not unhealthy for them either, necessarily. Uh, or just fake it till you make it. Hey, you know, just just, just put on a happy face and, and, and smile, and we'll just, we'll get through this and be just fine. No. Authenticity is their biggest thing. Any word to do with this stone in any direction to them is a huge put off for them. So authenticity is number one for them. Yep. Four, four. So. They are they are our most creative of, of the numbers, and uh, and so, so don't don't limit it. Um, don't don't put some boundaries on it. Don't say oh you like you like are you get a painting are you you you'd like to draw I mean would you would you get a roller and paint this wall? <laughs> you know don't don't limit that. I mean that's just anybody can do that. Anybody can just want to paint on the wall. No, no offense to the painters in here, but <laughs> what I'm saying is you know there's creative juices that they have and they, they want to do something with it don't don't box them in this little corner where you just got where there's no room for, for wiggle and, and no room for to express themselves um, it's going to be frustrating for them uh, don't rush them out of longing this they, they're, they're healthy in, in those times um, don't push them to get out of that um, they need that they need that um, and then show zero effort to understand it and while that's kind of a just a, a, a good phrase that we could apply to every number, you know, do your best to try to understand them. Um, with with fours, why are why are they? You know, we've kind of painted them as this sitting off by themselves, kind of waiting to be noticed. Um, well, okay, give them some attention, but actually listen to them and care about their story. Don't just like, oh, okay, that's great, then move on. Uh, don't just blow them off. Um, care deeply about what what. You know who they are and what they what they're bringing. Uh, show some effort to try to get to understand them. Let them express themselves. Let them to, you know tell you why they're unique or, or whatever along those lines. Um, easy for fours to get frustrated with these things. Yeah, they they oftentimes tick differently, and so it takes takes effort to like understand them wholly and truly 
connect to their heart, that idea. That's what they want. They want real relationship, not something fake. And so you not putting a ton of effort on them isn't going to, it's just going to upset them and not write you off. You know, with someone like, uh, and we, we just keep throwing ourselves under the bus here, but someone like Jesse, fake it till you make it. Yeah, I got this. You're not going to know I've got pain. You're not going to know that I'm hurt. You're not going to know that it, it's, it's kind of a natural place for them to go because uh, I'm trying to avoid that. Um, but this is this is exact, kind of almost exact opposite of that where it's, no, you're going to know about it. You're going to see that. Um, does this resonate with anybody in here? Are these, are these things that kind of, oh, that would that would really tick me off. Mike, do you feel some of these? Probably the second one. The second one? Yeah. What is about the second one, you think? I mean, just... just being authentic, yeah. Right. Emily, you? Um, I guess the last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people people value your time and, and your effort in that. And like I said, a lot of these will, will resonate across the board to a lot of different numbers, but these are kind of focused on uh, some of the specifics for the numbers. But there, there's a lot of these that we all kind of feel from time to time. You know, no, nobody wants to just be blown off. Um, give, them a, give them some chance to, to, to talk to them a lot. No, but. All right. Can we, can we raise, hand, raise your hands if you feel some of these? Yeah, we can. Okay. 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 I got you. All right. So my fives. My fives. Don't honor my need for time alone. You're always barging in when I'm trying to get my alone time. Always expect emotions in real time. Fives need to go sit about it, think about it figure out what emotions they actually want to have about it. But they just, they, they don't know in the moment. You're just waiting for their remote, emotional response. They don't have it. So don't. <laughs> Getting sucked into incessant small talk. This talk that goes on and on and on. Or someone else's drama. I don't care about someone else's drama. Okay? Force them to present on something without giving them the time to prepare. An open-ended meeting with no agenda. <laughs> We're just going to show up. No, we talk. Like We're going to just show up and talk about some things. Uh, this one right here, I was thinking about how fives in speech class, we had these impromptu speeches we had to give, and I was like, man, I remember there being kids who like, didn't even, it was in college, they were already, they like, I'm not even getting up and doing it. I'm not even trying. <laughs> now I look back, and I was like, those are the fives. I think we're like, I'm not, I'm not even about to take a shot in the dark, because we had to draw a little random slip of paper and just talk about what was ever on there. So I was like, that was my fives, and just said, I'm not even trying. Yeah, y'all, these resonate back here? Big time? One other one he throws on there, this is uh, Ian McCollum, you can follow him on Facebook, he's like Facebook Enneagram guy, and he just posts these and just other cool little tidbits about a number, like one each day and stuff. It's just really cool. Uh, but one he also put on there for himself, because he's a five, is, uh, says, says you have too many books. And I was like, Jonathan didn't agree, but I was like, what about read too many articles? He's like, OK, I'm in there. On the internet too much. OK, yeah, that bothered bother me. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. You're not taking notes on how to make it work here. Raise, raise your hand if you feel some of these. If you really feel some of them. Okay. Nine sixes are right. All right. Get over our sixes. Our time. Oh, we're, we're, we're doing good. Okay, good. Yeah, we still got sixes. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so our six is out of out of the uh, out of the whole uh, list of enneagram numbers. They're our worst case scenario folks. You know, they're 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 thinking, you know, what could go wrong type. Um, and, and once again, we try not to just play down on the you know play up on the negative side of things. But if there if there's a worrier among the enneagram, it's our sixes. And you can't just say, would you stop worrying about that? That is just not going to. That's not going to help. It's not going to do anything to help them because that's at their core. That's that's where they go. That's where they go. They're going to start worrying about it. So you can't just get past it. I, I don't worry about too many. I don't worry about too many things. But I got some family members that just that's that's uh, kind of where they land, and it just wear me out with just all this worry. And, and it, but it does me no good. Just say, just it ain't going to worry about that. You know, just just move on. 
It's going to anger them if, and uh, just frustrate them. If you tell them to stop worrying about it, what's going to happen is they're going to lose trust in you. Uh, that's that's the moment because when they tell you that they're worried about something, that means this is it's a safe place to tell you that. But if you tell them to stop worrying, well, this is no longer safe because this is the feeling I have, and I'm expressing it to you, and you tell me you don't care about the feeling that I have. And so I'm going to stop telling you when I'm worried about something in general, and I'm going to stop trusting you. Because remember, sixes are big on that trust thing where they totally trust you and they don't trust you at all. And, that, and, and when you tell them to stop worrying about something, that sends a message of, this isn't a safe place to tell me that. So what are you supposed to tell them? Uh, I, I think you reaffirm, uh, not to pick on Christy, I love Christy, she's my, she's my six and we've had youth group trips and we've had good times, but my, my response wasn't just stop worrying about it, my response was, we got this. We're going to take care of this. It's going to be great. Y'all, the mystery trip does not work with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's just like, Jesse, I'm driving. I got to know. And so I was like, just give her hands. I give like the little piece of information I could. Just, just to make sure she felt good. Because I do want her to feel safe. I want her to make sure she knows. And, and that's that's one thing is when when she would say she's worried. If there's something she was worried about, oftentimes she'd kind of lean in and do this. It's kind of like it is a, because it's. It, this is a safe place, me and you, and I'm telling you something that I'm worried about. It, it, this is when you kind of share a secret with someone. But why is it a secret that she's feel worried about something? Because we all know when people are worried, there are people out there, what are you worried about? Why are you, why are you tripping? You know, like we feel that. And so she's, she's received that before. So that's why it's kind of this secrety thing when she tells me. And if I respond that way, it's going to send a bad message to her. You respond with positive in that message. All right. You gonna roll on? Oh yeah. So um, yeah. So don't do what you say you do. Remember, they're the, they're the the loyal one. They're the you know let your yes be yes and your no be no. I said it was gonna be there. I, gonna, I said it wasn't gonna be there. Whatever. Um, do what you do what you said you're gonna do. So keep up your end of the bargain. There there's integrity. Um, uh, they they remember they're um, they're loyal. So they're they're gonna stick with it. They're not they're not not gonna waiver on that, they're gonna they're gonna stick with that. So say don't do what you said you were gonna do. Well that's, that's just frustrating. That's so frustrating. Um, you touched on this a little bit, you know, take their planning and questioning for granted. Uh, our mystery trip. There's there's not a whole lot of planning that, that you get to do with that. <laughs> you know, and with, with the way you like things is to be able to part of to plan this out and, and uh, put some put some thought into it. Um, you'd be part of the part of the head triad. Um, and so you, you want to put that into that, but when you don't have a, a, a say in that, that can be pretty frustrating. And with, with that, remember our six is a worst case scenario. They think about all the worst case scenarios. And so when they're planning and they're questioning, in their world, all the worst cases that didn't happen, they prevented that. <laughs> don't take it for granted. They're thinking, think about all the jams I've gotten you out of, and, and you could just say, what, what jams? All these ones that didn't happen were because of me. <laughs> they're thinking that. And it was because I planned for this and put that together. So don't take it for granted. I'm going to make this happen for you. By the way, thanks, Jesse. You're welcome, so the slide used to say, hide things for them. And I said, hey, Jesse, it says hide things for them. Should it say hide things from them? So now it says hide things for them. <laughs> Just for joke. I have no idea what that point means anymore. I'm lost on that. No, I'm just kidding. Don't, don't, don't keep things. Uh, be, be an open, be more of an open book. Uh, don't, don't, don't hide things. Uh, be honest. Uh, what do you see? Integrity. Uh, all, the, all these kind of things. Uh, yeah. Attention to detail, maybe. Bad news. Bad, bad news. <laughs> It's better for them than hiding the news because hiding the news causes <coughs> trust issues. Yes. yes. And, <laughs> and so if you just tell us the bad news, we can now put that into our plan and figure we it out. Yes. We, we can work it. it out. It's okay. Just never keep the bad news from me. And it's because me personally, you hide the bad news from me all day. I don't care. Ignorance is bliss. I truly feel that. I'm fine. But. That hide things from them, that, that's a big thing. Like, just, just throw it all out there. We'll figure it out and get through it. All right? So, seven. Hide things for them. Here we go. Hide things for them. Uh, all right, so here's our sevens. Move slowly. We focus too much on the details. We're fast movers. 
We want the big picture to be awesome. Details, that's fine. We'll fall into place. Force them to commit we'll to the same routine spelling. and schedule. Force them to commit to the same routine and schedule. You can see why I landed in youth ministry because <laughs> I don't have a huge schedule like that. You can what, see. what are your regular office hours, Jesse? Joe. Constantly, <laughs> <laughs> I go to the office to try to leave the office. I go in there and think about what I need to go do somewhere else. Constantly dwell on negative things. That just seven's just like man. You're bringing, you're bringing the funk in the room down. I'm trying to get away from that. We just trying to be positive. Shut down their ideas before you even heard them through. Ooh, this one's a big one for me. This one right here is real big for me. If I got this awesome idea, and I'll, all right, let me lay it out for you. I, I'm going to brainstorm a little bit. All right, so I'll start talking about it, and i start planning a little bit. And it's just like, ah, I didn't like how it started. Let's just move on. Hold on. I got to, you ain't even heard three-fourths of it yet. Like, I got to get through some of this. Like, I got a great idea. Don't shut me out yet. Because one, one, one thing, and it's kind of into this, mistake, mistake their excitement and positivity for being shallow and naive. I think there's often times there's like sevens get stamped with we're the fun, exciting, but not smart people sometimes. Like, bro, I'm in the thinking triad, back, back, you know? Like, <laughs> I put a lot of thought into it, but I am spastic and throwing out a lot of ideas. And I got all this fun I want to have, but I'm putting a lot of thought into it. And I'm, and I'm not trying to be shallow and naive, but this is just... My excitement and my positivity sometimes can come across as that. And, you know, obviously sometimes we come across as arrogant with some of that stuff too. But, man, when we just, when I get thrown into another niche of sevens are just overhyped and not smart. And I, the five guy that taught the class I went to, he made me feel ignorant. He, he, he just told me to read a book slow, and I was really mad at that dude. <laughs> He's just like, you're seven, read it slow. And I'm like, hold on, bro. <laughs> hold on, bro. He was right. But, <laughs> he was right. That book, that book was, 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 was quite thick and quite extreme. But it just, I don't like to be lumped up like that. I don't, I don't want that stuff anymore. Move slowly. Joe? Slow down, Jason. Joe. You got this? All right, we got sevens in here? Where's our sevens? How we feel? These resonate? Are you feeling this? Yep. Something, one in particular, more so than others? Yeah, constantly dwell on negative things. Yeah, that one drives me crazy. We don't pay that in our world. So, you can see, it's funny, like, a lot of the times the numbers that are next to each other and the ones we end up coupling with with our wings. So, like, I'm pretty sure I'm a seven and our wing six. You can see, and I, I could go through this a lot, but you can see how <coughs> just just hopping over here. Oh, why is my buddy like that? I, I, the, the back doesn't work very well over here. Uh, so you can see how a six's mentality could bother a seven who is planning and detailed, and the seven's like big picture fun, and how that would start to irritate them, and then. Just go forward. And then the constantly dwell on negative things where the six is caught up in the worst case scenario and seven's like, but well, I'm hoping for the best over here in your worst case scenario in my dreams right now. You can see how that could that could that can contrast and, and maybe lead like to fights and stuff. You, you, and, I, and I think a lot of our numbers, the way they're set up next to each other, uh, eight next to nine, you know, the challenger next to the peacemaker, uh, it just it can cause a lot of that. And I, I think every, every one of them is like that. We kind of looked into it a little bit, but that's for another time. Yeah, we need to move on. And so, sevens. Oh. <laughs> what did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got it. We got it. All right, so eights are challengers. Um, now, remember, I am strong. That's the, that's the message they've been trying to get the world to see in them. I am strong. So go behind the back of the train and make them look weak. Yeah, that'll, that'll go over real well. Um, no, don't, don't be doing that. Uh, just be up front. Uh, don't, don't go around behind the back and sneak around and do that kind of stuff. Be, be direct. Be up front with them. Uh, they can't stand it. Uh, indirect and indecisive. Would you just make up your mind? I don't care where we go to eat. Would you just decide? You know, uh, Just going on and on this, this, this uh, kind of trying to, well, I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings and so-and-so wants to eat over here and, and you know, they, don't like, they don't like fish. We're going to, just, just, just let's just go. You know, um, this indirect, indecisive, um, 
be, be, be okay with your decision. And, 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 and that's what they want. But when you start pulling that, it just gets so frustrating for an eight. Um, they're, they're also, a lot of our eights are the leaders. Uh, they, they end up in leadership roles. But they do not want to be the only guy that's doing it or girl that's doing it. They don't want to be relied upon for every single thing. You had a, a uh, you know, I mean, oh, Danny's not in here. Right. I talked to Danny about this. So I went in there just the other day when I was kind of looking at this stuff. And I was like, this one was surprising to me to rely on them for everything because I thought an eight's like, I'm the leader. I got you. Because that's the kind of my mentality as the seven of like my leadership, my assertiveness is like, yeah, I'll lead this. I got it. But they, they actually, Danny was like, no, I, I'm, I'm bugged crazy by that. I want people to be independent and work for themselves. And I like people taking charge themselves. Because when we show up in our staff meeting, we all look at Danny. Like, Danny, lead this thing. And he's, he knows it's his role to lead that. But there's just other times where we all just look to Danny. And Danny's like, why are we looking at me? <laughs> well, you're the leader, dude. Like, you're, you're the dude, right? And he's just like. No, he, I'm not in charge of youth ministry. I'm not in charge of small group. You know, yeah, and he, so he wants lead your, lead your area. Lead your area. Well, your and, and he just doesn't want to do your job for you. He wants you to do your job. And so I just thought. H would want that, but when I saw this, I talked to Danny. Danny told me a whole long story we don't have time for, but he, he, he just said, you just don't believe how much that resonates with me. He just talked about a Lithuania trip, and he had everything planned out, but people didn't believe him, and they just went and did their own thing, and he was just so frustrated at, at everybody coming to him nonstop about the issue, and he was like, I got it taken care of. So it's just, again, he doesn't, he doesn't want to be relied on for everything. All right, so moving on. Take advantage of the week. They are, they're going to stand up for the, for the week. They, they want to, to be strong for those who are not strong. And so you, you, want, to, you want to irritate them, you want to tick them off, be that one that's bullied, be the one that's picking on the week. And uh, that, that will really, really frustrate them. Uh, give a half-hearted effort. Um, why, why, are you not, why not give them your best? Um, and just, you can't, can't take that. You can't take that. It's fr that's frustrating especially for an eight. Um, I'm over here doing mine. I'm, I'm strong. I'm, I'm pulling my weight. Why aren't you pulling your weight? Uh, what, what you're doing is, is, is shoddy work. You're doing a half-hearted effort. Can't, this, this is frustrating for me, you know, for an eight. They're called the challenger, and they're challenging you to step up to the plate then. Yep. Uh, and so in the, even in competition standpoint, if we're playing one-on-one -on -one in basketball, and you decide, oh, I'm just playing around, well, the eight doesn't want to play you. They wants to beat you at your best, or they're not going to decide to play you. Like they want, they want to lose legit or win legit. They don't want half-hearted effort from somebody else. Like there. Goku. Yes. <laughs> no, we really don't like to lose at all. Whenever <laughs> <laughs> we win, we want to win. Yes, for sure. And, and but you you don't want it to feel like they quit on oh, you. No, and that's how no, you no, won. No. You don't you don't right. want to feel like you're taking advantage of the week. Yeah, for sure. And then finally, you know, they, they like the encouragement. They're, they're fine with the encouragement, but enough of the flattery. Don't want the flattery. Uh, don't overdo it. Uh, give me a pat on the back, say thank you for whatever, but don't just go on. Don't pull me up front and say, hey, just wanted to just point out what he, you know, what this person did, and you just go on and on and on. No, that, that's just that's a way to just kind of make them really uncomfortable and irritate them. So encourage them and, and say, hey, appreciate what you did, and then move on. Uh, don't just keep after it. Keep after it to where it's just like, okay, could you stop already? Uh, Dan, Danny likes to walk by, you hit him on the shoulder. Great sermon. Keep it moving. He's not trying to dwell in all that kind of stuff. And Joe was like, you think, I mean, a lot of people kind of feel that way. And they're just like, I can't relate. I mean, they're flat me. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can see, and they just don't trust the flat me. It's what are you buttering me up for? You know, it's, it's, it's not trustworthy. All right. All right, that was the bell, so we need to move on. All right, raise your oh. hands. You feel these? Eight, y'all feel like those resonate? I am, brother. Yeah. All right. And, but. All right, nines. All right, so nines get angry when you take advantage of the easygoing nature to get your way. Because remember, they're just, they're whatever. So it's like, well, I was really wanting to eat McDonald's today. All right, whatever. It's just you constantly are getting your way through their easygoing nature. Uh, make your work slash home environment loud and chaotic. Uh, rush them to make them make a decision quickly. Uh, constantly interrupt them. 
Uh, force. <laughs> and that is one of them we talked about. I was just like, isn't that everybody? Like, <laughs> I just enjoy being interrupted. Uh, force them to regularly change their routine. They want a, they want a consistent routine. I was talking to Cecil about some of these. Uh, well, Cecil's my in office nine. I talked to about this. and uh, so I was talking to about this constantly interrupt one. And Cecil, what you say? You said, you said something about a couple of these. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if I get interrupted, I'll just quit talking. Man. Right. If, uh, you know, if I'm in the middle of a sentence and somebody else starts typing, then I'm done with my thought. But, one of, uh, but the easygoing nature and sometimes feeling manipulated and doing things, one of the famous stories in our family is when Patty and I first got married, she thought she was being nice because if she wanted me to do something instead of asking me to do it, she would say, Cecil, would you like to do this or this? And one of the things she would ask me to do would be some job nobody would ever want to do. <laughs> and, so, and so I would say, yeah, I'll do something. And so, and, and, and well, for one thing, minds don't get angry. We just get mildly irritated, <laughs> uh, get a little annoyed. So I just, but, so, but, but that was enough of that one that I, I eventually said, if you want me to do something, just ask me to do it. But don't, don't try to make me feel like I'm making a choice here. Yeah. To do something. Yeah. The uh, constant interrupting that goes back to their childhood message that they're that they don't matter. And so when a nine works up the courage to share their opinion in a thing and then you interrupt them, I don't matter. It's just gonna ring true and they're just gonna be quiet. Uh, force them to regularly change their routine. Cecil is he just said he he lives his life. He's like, I don't have as many highs as Jesse, but my lows aren't as low as Jesse either. And that's true because he's he's got a good routine where he's in the middle. So, I was I was thinking about this one as well. What, what do you think about just constant like background noise, just yeah. stuff going on constantly? Is that a is that a distraction? Is that a oh I can't stand it or is it? Yes. <laughs> when we visit people and they don't turn their TV off. <laughs> yeah, that's like that. Just leave the TV on. It's like uh, you're not gonna give me any attention when that. How about the rest of y'all? Um, feeling these or not feeling these? Feeling them? Yeah. I'll be honest, not many of those are angry either. But nothing on that screen is making me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the ultimate peacemaker, guys. Perfect. Give us something. How do we make him mad? <laughs> <laughs> the micromanaging with the ones make me angry. But I know I'm not. <laughs> but well, coach, coach could wing that way. A nine could wing one. Yeah, it scares me if I wing. I, mean, I love my wife. <laughs> it scares me if I wing that way. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's us uh, for this evening. Enjoy your home. Wrap us up, close up. Yeah. You know, obviously, what we're trying to do is we're trying to to understand ourselves better. Uh, so that we can be the best number of us that we can be, but also so that we can understand each other, so we can understand our children, so we can understand our spouses, so we can understand our parents, our coworkers, so that we can realize maybe there's some things that I, you know, I, I work with a six, and then you know that's always irritating that I do this, you know, and so uh, keep these in mind, uh, and, and if uh, you know if you, if you want to get a copy of some of these or whatever, just we'll be happy to, to send them on to you, just so you can kind of keep them in mind. As, as you kind of go through your, your daily routine, but but the, the goal is, well, we're, we're trying to be more Christ-like in all we do. Um, Next week we got homework. Oh yeah. Uh, so we want to practice some discernment. So you're not supposed to tell people their enneagram numbers, but how can you put some of this into practice if you don't like start trying to? This is probably this number or an unhealthy this or just trying to figure out some people around you. But what I would like you to practice on is if you watch a movie this week, if you watch if you watch a TV show. Uh, just kind of, you're probably already doing it, but just, if you see, if you see a movie this week or just something, just, I'm going to figure out what this character is throughout this movie. Just kind of take that moment and kind of, kind of do some discernment. We'll, we'll do a little bit with that next week, but. And what we're not saying is don't go Google a bunch of numbers and find people and just come back with a list. Practice it. Is, is what we're saying. This doesn't do as good to just Google something and just have an answer. That's that's a that's a freeze way. <laughs> just trying to look good. Um, we we want to actually put it into practice and uh, get in the habit of discernment. Get in the habit of, of 
you know, seeing this and, and, and then making adjustments and, and being aware of that. So be, be mindful of the characters in TV shows and go, hey, you know, I think this person was a, you know, fill in the blank. So. Yeah. My daughter makes me watch Frozen for the 15th time this week, you know. Go. I'm going to, let's figure out what else it is. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we already know. We'll get, we'll get there next week. Let's, let's fill that with prayer. Thank you, God, for being the kind of God who just loved us so much. Uh, you, you created us. And uh, we want to say thank you for that, for, for being uh, super involved in our lives. We want to say thank you for that. You were involved so much that you uh, wanted to know what it's like to be human and, and so that you could fully, to fully get us and, uh, and also uh, restore a relationship with us. So thank you for sending Jesus Christ. Help us be more like him in every aspect of our life. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Blessings on your week, guys.